Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining us here on KXAN Live. Will Dupree coming to you from the KXAN Live studio. We appreciate you making some time for us on this Friday afternoon. And before you head into your weekend, we want to get you caught up on a few of the political headlines. There is a lot to talk about today. So first up, we want to mention that the president of UT Austin is out today with an editorial defending the arrest of protesters on campus during these last two weeks. Jay Hartzell wrote in the Houston Chronicle, the university has a proud history of protests, but also rules to ensure safety. He wrote this, quote, Regrettably, protesters, including many not affiliated with UT, have refused in recent weeks to accept these rules and processes. He went on to say that demonstrators refuse to take down some encampments in cases which are against the university's rules. He continued in his statement, writing, quote, At that point, regardless of anyone's opinion, this was no longer a traditional assembly or protest. By the plain language of our rules, it was criminal trespassing. Joining us to talk a, a little bit more about what was in that editorial is Ryan Chandler, who has been covering a lot of these protests very closely these last two weeks. Ryan, thank you for being here. We appreciate it. Thanks, Will. You know what? This editorial covered quite a bit of ground, but we have been trying to get President Hartzell on camera to answer some questions about their response, and you have put in multiple requests to talk to him. We've been going back and forth with the university administration for really the last 10 days. Um, they have not agreed to put anybody from the administration on camera yet to answer questions, uh, but we do get a look into uh, Hartzell's mind a little bit more with the editorial he put out in the Houston Chronicle this morning, where he essentially argues that free speech is important on campus, but he says this was not free speech. It was criminal. It was trespassing. It, it wasn't just a protest. He argues uh, that these students were planning on taking over campus the way we've seen at Columbia, Yale, and UCLA and colleges across the, the country. And he's really trying to get out in front of public opinion and justify the very strong law enforcement response that we saw from DPS. Um, so he, he's towing a very fine line between um, supporting free speech rights and celebrating the, the very diverse and outspoken campus community that there is at UT, while also saying that they crossed the line of what is allowable free speech and arguing that he did what he needed to do in order to shut criminal activity down. As you were reading through that editorial, and again, uh, you can find a little bit more about that on our website at kxan.com, but as you were looking at it, did he address at all some of the concerns that these protesters raised during their demonstrations? Along the lines of, of free speech, yes. I mean, the protesters have argued that they were shut down and arrested before they even violated any rules. Mm. And we, we did observe that on last Wednesday, I believe it was, when DPS first showed that, that overwhelming presence. They did that in anticipation of rule breaking. At least at the point where DPS arrived, there was no effort to set up encampments. There were no uh, uh, violations of, of commonly accepted free speech. It was a peaceful protest of less than 200 people, and that is when DPS first cracked down. So uh, people are very concerned about um, the, the university's response to free speech. And Hartzell says, look, we, we celebrate diversity of opinion. We um, have had many free speech events from pro-Palestinian protesters in the past. And in fact, he, he points to 13 pro-Palestinian events on campus since October, uh, none of which have been met with this level of force and, and all of which were actually allowed to happen in, in contrary to this. He just says that this was a unique event that needed to be shut down because of, uh, again, the intelligence they say they had that this was going to get out of hand. We had done some reporting about uh, hundreds of faculty members at UT opposing or signing a letter, at least, saying they opposed what President Hartzell had done. Again, that's just a portion of the faculty there. But today, uh, a full page ad went up in two other newspapers here in the state showing support for what he did. Can you talk about that? Yeah. So first part from the faculty and students, I believe we're up to about 600 faculty members now who have signed a letter of no confidence expressing their disappointment in the leadership of President Hartzell, arguing they, they think that they have put at risk uh, students, both physical safety and um, right to to uh, exercise their First Amendment rights. Now, in in opposition to that, 
Um, some of Texas's most influential and, and wealthiest uh, UT alums put out a full page ad in the Statesman and in the Dallas Morning News expressing their support for how Hartzell handed this, handled the situation. They said they're grateful that he took proactive action to um, prevent scenes that we've seen at Columbia from happening here in Austin. And this letter includes some of Texas's biggest and, and, and most uh, upper echelon names, you know, it, um, the Moody's, the, the Huffines, uh, former Trump Secretary of State Rex Tillerson, uh, uh, mega donor in Dallas Harlan Crow, some of the, those very influential um, uh, traditionally conservative donors who are throwing their weight behind Hartzell. That follows uh, unequivocal support that we've seen from the state. Of course, Governor Abbott and Hartzell are one mind when it comes to this, and he has the full support of the Board of Regents. So that's important context to keep in mind when you hear these calls for Hartzell to resign, because his job is um, only on the line if he were to lose the support of the state and the Board of Regents. And uh, they are unequivocally behind him. Yeah, they are standing by him at this point. So uh, coming up this weekend on Sunday, the state of Texas is going to focus on all that's unfolded here at UT. Can you give us a little bit of a sense about what the show might include and your involvement in that? I'm really excited for this Sunday. I encourage everybody to watch State of Texas uh, airing a Sunday morning. We did a special edition from the South Lawn, the epicenter of all of this controversy, diving into every aspect of this. I mean, this is such a complicated issue with so many different facets and contexts to understand, not only just about the protests themselves, but about the wider issue about um, the, the Israel-Hamas war and all of the sensitivities and complexities that go into that, um, including how the Jewish community at UT feels about all of this. Um, we dive deep into all of it, and hopefully it'll give everybody a better sense of what's going on and the future, because this is not over. We know that there's a, another protest planned for uh, Sunday at noon. Um, it's supposed to be a major protest, weather permitting, of course. Um, and then, of course, looking into next week with graduation, there may be protests around those ceremonies. So um, it, it's important that everybody uh, has an idea of not just what is happening, but why. And that's what we try to give you this Sunday. All right. Capital correspondent Ryan Chandler, thank you so much for joining us. And again, for everybody who's watching us right now, State of Texas airs on Sunday morning at 830 here on KXAN and at 930 p.m. on CW Austin. Ryan, thank you again for joining us, and I'll send you on your way because I know you've got some more reporting to do today, but we appreciate you taking the time this afternoon. Thank you, Will. All right, everybody, we are going to move on and uh, talk about some of the other headlines in our news. Texas Congressman Henry Cuellar and his wife are now facing conspiracy and bribery charges connected to a U.S. Department of Justice investigation into the couple's ties to the former Soviet Republic of Azerbaijan. The indictment alleges that Cuellar and his wife, Amelda, accepted nearly $600,000 in bribes from an energy company connected to Azerbaijan and a bank in Mexico. Prosecutors say that the Laredo Democrat agreed to advance the interest of the country and the bank here in U.S. This followed a raid the FBI conducted on Cuellar's home and office in 2022. This is video that you're looking at of that raid at the time. Now, ahead of the indictments released today, Cuellar did release a statement saying he and his wife are, quote, innocent of these allegations. He also said he sought legal advice from the House Ethics Committee before taking any action. And he said he's still running for re-election and plans to win his seat again in November. Back here in Austin, the city became the first in Texas to pass new protections after the state banned certain health care options for transgender young people. By a, vote of, by a vote Thursday of 10 to 1, the Austin City Council approved a resolution that directs local police to make any investigations into violations of Senate Bill 14 their lowest priority. This is similar to what city leaders did just two years ago regarding abortion. The law in question bars anyone younger than 18 from receiving treatments like puberty blocking medication to assist in their transition. City leaders, though, who supported the measure say people should be able to make their own health care decisions. However, Attorney General Ken Paxton here in Texas says he's against this new resolution, calling it an empty political statement because he claims it goes against state law. He wrote in a statement on Thursday, quote, if the city of Austin refuses to follow the law and protect children, my office will consider every possible response 
to ensure compliance. Now, Austin Mayor Kirk Watson countered Paxton's statement on Thursday by saying this, quote, the Austin City Council isn't flouting state law. We're doing what the state and our residents want us to do, prioritizing public safety and basic needs of all Austinites. This is about priorities. More about that story is available on, again, our website, kxan.com. Finally, President Biden is bestowing the highest civilian honor to a Texan known as the grandmother of Juneteenth. The White House announced Opal Lee as one of 19 recipients of the Presidential Medal of Freedom. The 97-year-old activist is widely credited for helping to push for Juneteenth to become a federally recognized holiday. President Biden signed a law back in 2021 making June 19th a national holiday to commemorate the end of slavery. You can see more Texas headlines and politics discussions on State of Texas, as we mentioned earlier. That's on Sunday morning at 8.30 on KXAN and will replay at 9.30 p.m. that night on CW Austin. We thank you again for joining us here this afternoon. We appreciate that. I'm Will Dupree in the KXAN Live Studio. Thank you all again for joining us. We'll see you back here at another time. We hope you enjoy your weekend. Take care.